So it says now, write a pseudocode algorithm to read in a set of numbers. Note, we don't know how many numbers we should take. So from which the set of numbers, one alarm supposed to go off and say, all right, this is not a straightforward algorithm. Good. So let me highlight first and foremost, what is it that we are to do? So first we are going to read in a set of numbers. We don't know how many numbers, we know there are some numbers. Good. We are to count the number of odd. We are to count the even. I wonder if I should highlight like it's a green area, guys. Even numbers entered. So we're counting. We are to find the sum of all positive numbers. And we are to print the result. So let us analyze. Oh, last part now. The algorithm should be terminated when a negative one is entered. So let us analyze the question. This question is a looping question. How we know that it is a looping question? The first sign was it says read in a set of numbers. Now, because algorithm, you're going to move from algorithm to program implementation, no matter what it is, you're not going to write an algorithm and leave it as that. You write an algorithm because you plan on turning whatever it is that you're writing the algorithm for into a workable program. Now, if it says a set of numbers, even when you use an array, which we'll come to later on, even when you use an array, and with the array, you can accept multiple values, but you cannot accept them at the same time. So you can't have five persons in reality giving you five numbers all at once, and then the computer is just going to analyze it. You have to take one entry at a time. It's going to be much faster than how you would do it in human form, because boom, as you enter one value, it's going to give you back a result but it's going to take it one at a time. So that was the first sign that this is a loop. The second one is the fact that it says that it is supposed to be terminated when negative one is entered. If it said that we are supposed to accept five numbers, then we would know that we're going to use a for loop. But because it gave us a terminating value, we are going to use a while structure. Good. So we are to accept a set of numbers. We don't know how many. Then now we are to count if the number is odd, count the number if it is even. But we need to find the sum of all the numbers entered once it is that it is positive, right? And print the result. So let's go. So first thing now. All right, so the first thing we're going to have is the name of our algorithm. And basically this is just numbers. So that's what we're going to have. What is the F1 size for this? I wonder if I'm here alone can stand this type of caliber. I just can't use it. It show me. Um, numbers, that's the name of our algorithm there. Then now we're going to have our declaration. So how many variables do we need? We need one for number, for the numbers that are in, so that is num, good. Then now we need to count the odd number. So we are going to have odd, I'm going to have O count, because that is counting the odd numbers. And then I'm going to have E count to count the even numbers. Then now we need to use sum, because it's only one that we have, so there's sum, and then print the result. So we are going to print sum and we're also going to print the count for odd and even. So that is four variables there. Hope you're following. Now moving on to the body, we're going to have start and we're going to have our stop. Good. And we're going to indent away from that. All right. Good. Now, First thing, count 
counting the odd and even numbers, and also for some, we have to give it a starting value. So we need to have a starting value because each time the user enters a value, we want it to increase the, count, the odd count or the even count, but we also need to find some. So we have to give it a starting value. So O count is going to be equal to zero. Same thing now for E count is going to also be equal to zero. Your sum should also be equal to zero. Good. We're looking on Y now. So here we need to give the instruction to the user that they need to enter a number. The name that we're using for a number. So we need to ensure before we carry out any calculation that the user did not enter negative one. Good. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to have our while structure, which is the repeating part. So, we're going to have while, home bracket, what is it that we need to check the variable name? We need to check num. So while num is not equal to, so we put the less than followed by the greater than sign. So while num is not equal to negative one, and note, with your variable name, do not put your variable name in quotation. If what you are checking the variable for is text, then you are going to put that in quotation, the text that you're checking for but try and never, ever, ever put your variable name in quotation. Matter of fact, your program will give you an error message there. So while num is not equal to negative one, do. What do we want to happen? We need to increase odd count and the even count, good? In that case, now we need to use an if statement, right? What is, how is it we know if a number is odd or a number is even? There's a new sign or a new word acronym that we're going to introduce. That is mod. So mod is used to hold the remainder. So normally, once you're doing division, you would use your division sign. So if I have eight divided by two, which is this sign, it's going to return four. So it's basically going to tell me how many groups of two I can get out of eight. However, if I have eight mod if I have eight mod two then what it is going to record is the remainder. Based on this question, we want to count the odd and even numbers. So let me clear this for you. Now, based on or what is it we would have been taught from primary school of even numbers are divisible by two. So when you divide an even number by two, you will get zero. If it is odd, you will get one. And that is what we are going to do right here. I was saying now, you have two ways that you can do this. So if num, if num mod two equals zero, then, and you place your condition, right? However, if you wish not to do it like that, what you can do is that you can carry out the calculation. So we introduce a new variable called num. In this case now, what you would have is num is equal to num mod 2. Good. So in this case now, our condition would not be a calculation. Basically, what we are checking now is to see what is stored in n num. So if n num is equal to zero, then what is it that we would want to happen? 
So if it is equal to zero, it means now that it is an even number. So you're going to increase the even count. So what you're going to do now is that you are going to take e count, which is the variable, take e count, and have e count be equal to itself plus one. Good. Moving on. Else. So if it is not even, then automatically now it is odd. So O count would be equal to itself, which is O count. Plus one. And then we would end or if. Then now we need to find sum. So we have one number here. So what we're going to do, we are going to have sum is equal to itself plus whatever number the user entered. And that is going to loop until the user enters negative one. So here, what we're going to all put, we're going to end our while first. So that's end well. Then now we're going to output the different calculations that we did. So we're going to have right, open bracket, and or quotation. So first thing we want to output is our e phone. So even phone is quotation comma. And we put our variable name outside of the quotation, which is e phone. Close bracket. We're going to do the same thing now for our o phone. We're going to output some. And then that would be it because we already have our. Now, let us trace and see what it is that our algorithm is doing. So we have the number one. All right, so two, six, six is real. All right, seven. All right, so let us trace now and show what exactly the algorithm is doing. So at the beginning part here, we are going to we are going to start at start. Right here where we have our O count, we're yet to accept a value. So our odd count is equal to zero, which means that we are yet to check if it is that the number entered is odd or even. Same thing, we're yet to calculate any sum, so we gave it a starting value. So everything is equal to zero. Right? Enter a number. So in this case, the first number or the first user was Dyer and Dyer entered the number one. Good. So now we have a value. So now the system is going to check is num and what is num? Num is equal to one. Is it equal to negative one? It is not equal to negative one. So it means that this condition is false. So we are going to move on to whatever we have in our loop. So we're going to take um, num, which we don't have a value for, we're going to assign value to it. So we're going to take one and we're going to divide it by two. So one, two into one would be zero and it would leave a remainder of one, which means that this number is negative. So in num, n num right here, one is stored. So what is going to happen now? You're going to come down to your if statement. So if one, which is what is in n num, is equal to zero, then it is not equal to zero, so it's not going to execute this instruction here at all because it is not equal to zero. It's going to go down to the O count aspect because in actuality, one is a odd number. So we're going to increase our odd count. So odd count, which is this one, 
is equal to itself. At the initial state right here, we have odd count being equal to zero. So that is the value that we are going to take and put right here. So odd count is equal to zero plus one, which means that we have one odd number being entered. So this is going to change now from zero to one. Coming out of the if now, it's going to calculate sum. Sum is equal to itself. And what is it equal to right here? It is equal to zero plus whatever value the user entered, which is one. So at this stage now, sum is going to be equal to one. That is after the first loop. Now, because it is still not equal to negative one, what is going to happen is that it's going to continue until that is entered. So the second person, so the second value is two. So what is going to happen? It's going to come back to the state here where it says enter a number. So the user is going to enter not one, no. So we're going to erase the one that was entered previously, right? And now what we have here is two from the second user. So the second user entered two. So right here, what we have stored in num is two. That is what we have stored. So right here, it's going to check. Is two equal to negative one? No, it's not. So we are going to continue in the loop. So what is going to happen now, it's going to change the values that we have. Let me remove some things. So here, we're going to take num, which is now equal to two, and we're going to divide it by two, right? So two into two would go one time. So we can get one group of two out of two. But because we are using mod, it is storing remainder. So after we take the group of two out of two, what is left? zero is left. So at this stage, n num is going to be equal to zero. So it's going to come and it's going to check in the if statement right here, what is the value of n num? So at this stage, n num is equal to zero. So it says if n num is equal to zero, which it is, we are to increase the e count, which is our even number. So what is going to happen here? We're going to take e count and we're going to take the value that it has, which is zero. So e count is equal to zero plus one. So e count is going to increase to one right here. Your number is obviously even, so we're not going to do anything now to your o count. So we're going to move outside of your if statement. Good. So what is going to happen? We are going to take the last value that we have stored for sum. So sum is going to be equal to sum and the last value for sum is what? So the last value we have stored in sum is one. And what do we have stored in num now? Two, very good. Remember that num is what the user entered. We are not talking about n num, which is storing the remainder, is what the user entered. So we are going to have two here. So which means that sum is going to change now from one and it's going to change to three. All right, so moving on now to the third person. All right, so continuing now guys. So the next number, so we are going to continue because we don't have negative one as yet. So the next person entered six when we asked them, to enter a value. So they saw on the screen, enter a number, they entered six, right? So if six, we're, sorry. So we are going to check now, is six equal to negative one? So what is saying right here, num should not be equal to negative one for you to execute everything that is in your while. So because it is not equal to negative one, we can execute, good? So right here, we have n num. We're saying that n num is equal to num mod two. So if n num is equal to zero, which in this case it is, because after taking out the groups of two out of six, we were left with zero. 
So n num is equal to zero, which means that six is a um, even number. So we are going to increase e count because it meets this condition. Good. So e count is going to be equal to itself. So we take the last value that we had in e count one. Good. So we are going to take the one and we are going to add now the new number that we um no sorry not the new number. We're going to increase it by one. So we're going up by one because we have now just one new um, even number. So here now that we are at six, we're going to increase this. So e count is going to be equal to the last value, which is one plus one. So e count is now going to change to two. Good. Let's move on now because we're not going to do the odd count because the number is even. So we're going to go down to sum. The last value that we had stored in sum is three. So we're going to have now that sum is equal to three plus the new number that the user entered. So what is the value for sum? So sum now is going to change from three to nine. All right. So in the before the last user entered negative one the user entered seven we're going to check if seven is equal to negative one it is not equal to negative one so we are going to proceed with the information inside of our loop so here now we're going to find out the remainder so we're identifying we're ascertaining if seven is a odd or even number so we're going to have seven divided by two. We can get three groups of seven out of three groups of two out of seven, and that's going to leave a remainder of one. So n num is equal to one right now. Good. So if n num, which is equal to one, is equal to zero, then so we know that it is not equal to zero, so it's not going to execute this part. It's going to move to the O count because we know that seven is odd, an odd number. So O count is going to increase now by one. The last value that we had stored in O count was one. So we're going to have one right here and we're going to add one to it. So O count is now going to move up to two. Good. So now, we're going to increase sum. So sum is equal to the last value in sum, which is nine. And we're going to add to it the number that the user entered. So the user entered seven. Sum now is going to move from nine to 16. All right, very good, 16. Right, so after we calculate that now, the system is going to check. So let's say at this point, the user entered negative one. Good, so if the user entered negative one, what is going to happen? The program is going to end or we will not execute whatever is in the loop itself. Good, so if negative one is entered and we're not going to, calculate the O odd, the even, the odd, or calculate sum. We're going to move down to the output section. So what is going to happen that on your screen, when you transition into program implementation, what you're going to see is the actual text. Let me go down. So the last number we have for sum is 16. All right. So what you're going to see on your screen is even count is, and even count now at this point is going to be two. So even count is two, odd count is two, and sum is equal to 16. That is what would be outputted on the screen. And then your algorithm. Would finish. Good. So 
now that we have traced the algorithm, let us move in now to the flow chart. So we said that for the flow chart, we're basically focusing on the body. So we're going to take our shape. So what do we use now for, to signify start, oval, or right, good morning. Let me add the text start. So coming now from start, we need our arrows. I'm ensure that your arrow have a head to it. All right, good. So we're going to move down to our assignment where count, O count, E count, and sum is equal to zero. Which shape do we need there? Rectangle. So once it is that we're doing any calculation or any assignment, you're going to use your rectangle. So let us add our text here. So basically we assign the value. So O count equals zero, E count equals zero, and sum equals zero. All right. So then now we're going to have our arrow. Then we are going to have what? What comes next? Clean rectangle. All right, so here now we're going to have, and as I say, you could have both in there, so let me do that part. So. All right, good. Then now we're going to have a next arrow. All right, so what comes next? Diamond, very good. So in here, as I say, you can write a question or you can write the while structure as you have it. So while, and we have num, is not equal to negative one. And that's that part. All right, what comes next? Let me put my arrows right there. So it said that we, um from the decision box, which is your diamond, you want to put your lines and you must label your lines to say that this is the direction for true or false. This is the direction for yes or no. Same thing. Anyone you choose, that's fine. All right, a rectangle. Good. All right, so rectangle is going to come here. All right, let me add the text here. So we are going to have n num is equal to num mod two. We don't need it to be that big. All right, good. So moving on now, what comes next? Arrow. I don't know why I'm in touch and save on this screen. All right, so arrow, after arrow, then what? So we're going to do a diamond. All right, so we're going to write in here or if structure. So, so if n num is equal to zero. So if it is equal to zero, what's supposed to happen? What should go down? What comes next? So the same thing that we're going to do that we had at the top, right? So you're going to have your yes and your no.
rectangle. All right, very good. We're going to have a rectangle at the end. No. What comes next? We have the rectangles. All right, let me add the text to the rectangles since I already put them there. So we're going to have, so if yes, then what is going to happen would be E count. So this would be O count. O count equal O count plus one. And then on this side, you would have E count equal E count plus one. All right, so how do we get this all back together? Arrow, circle. So this is where our connector will come into play. So I copy this. So we're going to basically connect these two using a connector. And then we're going to have our arrow going to it. All right. So after now, or connector, what comes next? So it would be a rectangle. Very good. And this rectangle is used for sum. So this is where our looping structure comes into play now. Sum equals sum plus one. We need to show that this is a loop. So after it is that we have calculated sum, it is to go back to that section which asks us to enter a number. Good? That is how we show that it is a loop. So we should have an arrow now after sum is calculated. We should have an arrow pointing from this going right back up to this section here. So once it is that you do a flow chart and you're seeing an arrow going back up to something, let's say a question was used to structure in the diamond. Instead of having the word while, instead of having the word for, it was a question there. So you don't know basically if it is an if statement or if it is a for or a while. Normally for a normally for an if statement, you would not see a loop, a looping structure going right back up. But what you will know is that for the for the while or the repeat until you will find the arrow pointing right back up to the top. So no, no. So after we calculate some, it's going to go right back up to the top where we would have asked the user to enter a next value. What should happen if negative one is given? When negative one is given, we should output these values that we have down here. So what we're going to use for this shape is, is lean rectangle. All right, very good. Right here, what we're going to do now, so we're going to have output um, O count, output equal and we're going to output some right. and that would have been your flowchart 